Hi everyone, I'm Rincey and this is Rincey Reads. Today I'm going to be talking about more comics. If you aren't aware, one of my 2020 reading goals is to read more comics and to help do that I am working my way through AV Club's best comics of the 2010s list that they put out at the end of last year and so I'm doing two every month so I'm here to talk about the two that I read this month. So first I'm going to talk about Giant Days. Now Giant Days is a comic that I have read before but I am very much behind. I continue to be behind because I haven't read all of the bind ups that are out of Giant Days. I just read this one. So if you aren't aware Giant Days is a kind of slice of life comic. Um, you are following a cast of characters who are all in college in the UK and there isn't really like a strong plot or anything to this. You're just following these group of friends. And so volume three took a bit of a turn from the other two volumes, partially because like the first two volumes, you're meeting the characters and they are forming their friendships. And so now like those friendships are established and so you can kind of do other things with the storyline, uh, but partially also because the artists in this one changed. So I wasn't crazy about the art in this one. I mean, it's fine. It does what it needs to do, but it feels a lot more like cartoony and over the top than it did in previous uh, issues and I know that like changing comics is a normal thing. Sorry, changing illustrators is a normal thing in comics especially for ongoing series like Giant Days but it's always a little bit jarring when it happens because you get used to the characters looking a certain way and then they don't anymore. It's kind of like watching a soap opera and having your favorite characters recast. Um, I like this. This was, you know, fun and cute. I like Giant Days. Uh, I didn't love this one as much as the first two volumes and I think it's just because they do different things with the characters in this one. Like there's different pairings. The girls, the three girls, don't spend a lot of time together necessarily. Like they sometimes are paired up for certain issues, but there's only like one issue in here that has all of them all together and those are my favorite. But yeah, I enjoy Giant Days. I have the other volume here. I just didn't get around to it. So I'm probably going to just hang on to that one and maybe read it next month. So the comic that I have significantly more to talk about because it was brand new to me is Goodnight Pun Pun by Ennio Asano and this is my first manga ever. So this is like set up in the traditional manga format in that it reads right to left and you start with this side of the book and you flip through to the end this way. This was very unique and not at all what I was expecting <laughs> from this comic. So I went into this knowing literally nothing. I'm going into all of these comics knowing literally nothing outside of like a general idea of maybe some things I've picked up from other people but like the vast majority of these comics I'm going in pretty blind. So I didn't even know this was a manga that was like published this way <laughs> until I picked it up from the library. The basic synopsis is that you are following this character named Pun Pun who is a bird. Um, it doesn't look like a bird necessarily as much in the front but as you get like farther into it and you see its profile you can tell it's a bird. Um, its family members are birds but all of the other characters in here are drawn in a very stylized Japanese way like very traditional realistic Japanese style. And so Pun Pun is like in middle school, he has a crush on a girl, he has some family issues that he's dealing with, like his dad is abusive and his doesn't like his mom too much. And so it's like this coming of age story slash slice of life sort of thing following this middle school aged boy, boy bird. It's weird. So yeah, like I said, I had very mixed feelings about this book. Partially, I think because I didn't know what I was going to get out of it and so everything kind of threw me for a loop. Like I said like Pun Pun is drawn in this way but everyone else is very stylized and it's a very interesting way to do art. Like it very much is that thing of keeping the main character so plain so you can kind of insert yourself into that character's shoes but at the same time it also feels very jarring. There are other panels in here that feel like very psychedelic and over the top especially when it comes to the adults and I wasn't exactly sure what was going on like if it's meant to be like borderline horror or if it was meant to be you know more psychedelic. I think it is more on the psychedelic side the more I read into it but there are like certain panels in here especially of the adults like like especially of the adults that just just felt so jarring that it really like I don't know it had it, it left a not as great taste in my mouth as I was 
you know, expecting out of this, especially because I know a lot of people really, really love this. And I completely understand why people really love this. Outside of those like psychedelic or like over the top sort of elements to it, there's a really beautiful story going on here about this kid who's trying to just like grow up and figure out his life. You see him struggling with having his first crush and you see him struggling with growing up and all of the boys around him are very interested in like sex and porn and he is too to a certain extent although he doesn't completely understand what's going on either like I said his family situation is not great and his uncle comes and lives with them for a while and that's a whole thing so there are like a lot of like really beautiful things being explored here but then it's like juxtaposed with this like really jarring over the top experience um and especially the stuff dealing with like all the porn and things I was like I mean I know this is a part of like certain people's lives but like I found it very off-putting, especially since it felt like these kids were just kids. <laughs> but maybe that's just me with my old age looking at these things. So yeah, I, this is definitely an interesting reading experience and I'm glad that I read it um, and I'm glad I got to experience it if only because like, again, it was my first manga and so it gave me a very different experience with comics. I don't think that this is a book that everyone's gonna love or a comic that everyone's going to love because it has those elements that I think will throw people off but like I said it has some like really beautiful elements in here too that I think make it worth reading so yeah it's one of those I'm glad that I read it I can't like blanket recommend it or anything along those lines and I'm not really sure where I land like rating this is going to be really difficult for me to the point that I might not even rate it because I don't there's no like easy rating for it I mean I guess I could just give it three stars because like technically that is kind of where it falls like I loved parts of it but I didn't love parts of it so I guess that's like a three star book for me but I feel like that undermines how good the good parts are if that makes sense so yeah that is everything I have to talk about in this video um next month I know I'm picking up Hark a Vagrant and something else that I can't remember off the top of my head I've had like a weird February in many different senses and one of them is in my reading as well so I haven't been reading as much so hopefully I'll get back into the swing of things a little bit more and I'll be like a little bit more excited to pick up my comics but I do think I'll enjoy Harker Vagrant since I've heard so many people praise it so highly. So yeah let me know down in the comments below if you've read these comics and what your thoughts were on them if you did or if you have any questions you're always welcome to leave that down in the comment section as well. So yeah that's all I have for now thanks for watching.